Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you to Miss Farah Nabila Wazir, the Master of Ceremony, and Mr. Muhammad Amrizat Ruslin for leading the doa. Yang amat berhormat Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri bin Yaakob, Prime Minister of Malaysia. Yang berhormat Datuk Sri M. Saravanan, Minister of Human Resources. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki bin Ali, Chief Secretary to the Government. Yang berhormat Datuk Haji Awang bin Hashim, Deputy Minister of Human Resources. Yang bahagia Datuk Muhammad K. Razman bin Muhammad Anwar, Deputy Secretary General Operation and Acting Secretary General Ministry of Human Resources. Yang berbahagia Professor Tan Sri Datuk Dr. Haji Muhammad Anifa bin Haji Abdullah, Chairman of the Sokso Board. My friend Professor Dr. Johan Brower, President International Social Security Association, ISA, and fellow panelists attending online with me today. The Honorable Sokso Board members, heads of government departments and agencies, industrial associations, NGOs, members of the media, all local and international participants of the forum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you and good day to everyone joining this virtual session. I'm Dr. Azman, the CEO of Sokso Malaysia and as a host of Malaysia first major virtual international public employment services forum 2021. I wish you a warm welcome and selamat datang to all distinguished speakers, guests, participants, media friends and everyone present. We are indeed pleased to organize this conference as we have come a long way from a traditional role that we had served in the social security arena to being very dynamic and progressive. Over the years, we have been in our comfort zone thinking that the current social protection framework in general is sufficient. But I believe that you would agree with me that in the last two years, we had been put to the test of how resilient our respective social security system is and how we had to aggressively implement the changes to ensure we were able to provide the very basic social protection that we had never thought of doing so in the past. I hope the very purpose of this conference will give all of us the insights of how social security systems in different countries had been put to the test and its outcomes, as well as from the businesses themselves, how they had survived as they rebuilt themselves, which we hope will benefit our audience from all over the world to survive thrive and come back stronger than ever. In this session, I'll be sharing with you the Malaysian social protection perspective on the measures that we had implemented to ensure adequate social protection to help beneficiaries as well as non-beneficiaries to put food on their table for themselves and the families. First, I will share with you the unemployment trends followed by how we implemented a quick and holistic approach in designing the benefits and the strategies that we undertook. I will then zoom in on the protection measures and finally the way forward. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen a global impact on jobs and the livelihoods of people from the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. From losing jobs, and in some worst case scenarios, individuals becoming homeless and even cases of suicidal attempts. The impact on job is worse than the global financial crisis, where studies show that the pandemic impact on jobs has been tenfold. If we compare the situation in Malaysia back in 2019, the country unemployment rate was at 3.3%, with 508,200 individuals unemployed. And when the pandemic hit the country sometimes in March 2020, a significant impact on employment was seen where the unemployment rate shot up to 5.3%, almost double of what we had encountered in the past. The situation has led to a significant increase in claims for SOXOs 
loss of employment benefits, where there was a sharp 58.5% rise in application for the unemployment benefits in 2020 as compared to 2019. At the peak of COVID-19 pandemic, job losses reported to SOXO soared more than six times of that before the pandemic, as you can see in the chart displayed. A blessing indeed that we had the employment insurance system in place, so we were able to react swiftly to this economic shock. Ladies and gentlemen, with this pandemic, we have also seen changes in the labor market, particularly in the informal sector. While working part-time and freelancing have always been a practice, the participation in the gig workforce has gained popularity due to the rise of digital platforms and the internet, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic reached Malaysia and many employees were laid off. Many had resorted to self-employment to have quick access to income since it was an economy with a low entry barrier. In Malaysia, way back in 2017, a growth had already been seen in the gig economy where its 31% growth had surpassed that of the conventional workforce. Today, gig economy employment accounts for close to 16% of the labor force and this had further triggered the need to ensure adequate social protection given the increased risk of occupational hazards such as accidents or risk of being exposed to COVID-19 infection. In response to the pandemic, the government of Malaysia had quickly stepped in to provide immediate relief to affected Malaysians. A structured plan was implemented known as the Malaysian Economy Recovery, Reco Malaysian Economic Recovery Plan, which focused on resolving the immediate problems while looking at reforms, taking the opportunity to address structural issues. In empowering the people, RM 12.23 billion was injected by the government in helping people to safeguard jobs, incentivize hiring, prop up income, and support the transition towards the new norms of working and learning remotely. While in propelling businesses, RM 9.655 billion was allocated with the objective of sustaining operations, uplifting productivity and digitalization, enhancing entrepreneurial activities and reviving consumer confidence. Other measures include financing for the SMEs, microfinancing to support micro enterprises, as well as tax relief for COVID-19 related expenses to encourage businesses to adapt to new norms and adhere to standard operating procedures, SOPs. In stimulating the economy, RM 12.162 billion was set aside to provide targeted sectoral and systemic support to help businesses adapt and grow in the new norm operating landscape. Some measures include the RM 0.08 billion or 80 million ringgit allocation for technology innovation sandbox to encourage innovation and creativity that can propel the digitalization of service delivery and RM 0.02 billion or 20 million ringgit for digitalization of government service delivery to enhance efficiency of government service delivery in light of the new social distancing norms. As a social security provider, SOXO is involved in several key measures where employment is concerned. In our active involvement in some of the design of the benefits packages, we took a step back looking at the policies that were in place and decided to take a multi-pronged approach as a strategic response to further enhance what was being provided by the government. Starting with immediate relief to ensure a quick win for employees who were put on no pay leave by giving them cash incentives to enable them to at least put food on the table for themselves and their families. We had also looked at a package known as the Wage Subsidy Program to prevent employees from being retrenched. This measure had saved the jobs of more than 2.7 million employees. While the economy is on the road of recovery, 
we look at the propelling the businesses by empowering them to create jobs to support unemployed unemployed individuals in terms of providing short term employment and formal employment and apprenticeships as well as for graduates who would certainly be challenged in getting employment opportunities considering the economic situation where many businesses put hiring on hold to implement these measures soxo also realized the need to build strategic partnerships as these are major initiatives which soxo would not have been able to execute smoothly without the cooperation from relevant ministries and agencies most importantly we also look into the need to extend social protection as implementing these measures have tested the current legislative framework for which some of the initiative would not have been possible without the grants provided by the government here are some of the immediate reliefs implemented by soxo under the covid-19 package starting with the employment retention program which provided financial support for employees who were put on no pay leave we then moved to the switch subsidy program that aimed to retain employees and prevent employers from being retrenched their employees more than 2.7 million employees benefited from these initiatives as malaysia went through a roller coaster of moving in and out of the movement control orders various extension was provided to the wage subsidy program as the economy began to recover we started looking into increasing the access to employment while empowering businesses to create jobs by hiring unemployed individuals for this the hiring incentive was introduced which include not only financial incentives but also reskilling opportunities and job readiness allowances the design of these incentives aims to increase the participation of local workers for occupations that are very much dependent on foreign workers in addition to the financial incentive provided to the employer a top up incentive of a maximum of rm2000 ringgit is accessible to successful candidates for up to 6 months next are incentives for the informal sector due to the growing concern on the social protection of self employed individuals given a very small number of them are registered with soxo for access to basic social protection hence the government step in by providing full or matching grants for vulnerable self employed individuals including women for employees who have lost their jobs we support them with the existing loss of employment ben- benefits under the employment insurance act 2017 these benefits were extended from 6 months to 9 months where the addition- additional 3 months benefits were funded by the government this was further expanded to non contributors to provide an employment benefits package with activation of employment programs targeted at graduates and non soxo contributors with the implementation of these initiatives we found a coverage gap in the current social protection framework many key vulnerable groups who are not in education and employment are somewhat deprived of access to the basic social protection this has resulted in the evaluation of the adequacy of the malaysian employment injury scheme the current occupational insurance scheme includes four main schemes which are the employment injury scheme the invalidity scheme the employment insurance scheme and the self employed employment injury scheme for some of the immediate response to the covid-19 impacts we were able to implement them within the current legislative framework such as the inclusion of the covid-19 infection as an occupational injury increasing coverage of informal employment from 1 to 20 sectors and the extension of unemployment benefits under the employment insurance system eis with the funding from the government meanwhile there were other pertinent initiatives that would not have been possible without the government intervention this would include the extension of unemployment benefits to non contributors and providing reskilling programs to non beneficiaries while some of them are included in the proposed amendments of the legislation which we expect to table soon some inclusion have also been considered 
including the coverage of EIS for foreign workers and self-employed individuals. Looking at the coverage gap for those who are unemployed based on the statistic from the Department of Statistics of Malaysia, only 14.8% of the 764,400 unemployed individuals are covered by EIS and receive unemployment benefits in 2020. It is a huge concern to us on the remaining 85% of unemployed individual if they are actively involved in some form of employment but not covered with the social protection systems. One of the structural issues contributing to this gap is the absence of an avenue to capture the information of the potential labor force that will allow us to track them from the time they complete education until they are at work. The fragmentation and duplication of efforts have resulted in this data not consolidated, thus preventing efficient resources to be allocated to the individuals based on their needs. Nevertheless, some of the initiatives from the stimulus package allow SOXO to fill these gaps, especially for employees who do not have sufficient qualifying conditions as well as non-contributors who are about to enter the labor force. In our approach to improve access to employment and enable job creation, SOXO took a multi-pronged approach in not just providing access to employment opportunities, but we also embarked on a holistic approach attempting to address several structural issues related to employment and education. Firstly, job creation incentives. An inclusive incentive was designed for all categories of job seekers, including vulnerable categories such as ex-convicts, person with disability and prolonged unemployed graduate. To address mobility-related issues and to encourage candidates to move to where the jobs are, mobility allowances is included where feedback from job seekers are positive. The allowance helps them in starting a new job. Secondly, short-term employment measures as a quick win in the informal economy as this provides access to fair, sustainable and productive means of earning a living in the gig economy with low barriers to entry for unemployed individuals and vulnerable groups such as persons with disabilities and the B40, bottom 40% income group. SOXO first, first case management based portal, My Future Job, has been recommended as a single window portal that connects the affected individuals and the public at large with other employment-related services. For example, training for the existing workforce run by other agencies. Most importantly, the portal continues to serve as a job matching platform which is accessible to all employers and candidates to post vacancies and search for job respectively. These end-to-end -end solutions also allows us to track the active employment status of the individuals where the, in the event they have fallen from the employment protection, we could proactively approach them to aid wherever required. Technological advancement has been a great savior during the pandemic, not just allowing businesses to convert from the brick and mortar to digital platforms where one could order goods, foods or groceries with a tap of button, but also connecting jobs to people. SOXO has been very aggressive and continues to do so in providing employment opportunities through this digital platform at no cost to organizations or employers. With various initiatives implemented together with the hiring incentive, a total of 205,460 individuals were successfully employed. It is important to note that all these efforts from our initiative to social reforms are indeed not possible without strategic partnerships. We have engaged with many ministries and agencies, as well as fostered private-public partnerships to capitalize on respective strengthen to carry out the initiative and measures at best. Tied up with universities and community centers for better access to job opportunities are among some of the collaboration we establish. 
in addition to partnerships with digital platforms in view of challenges faced such as the openness and willingness for voluntary contribution. SOXO will continue to work with various institutions to ensure that we are able to reach to the deep end of the communities to ensure that no one is left behind. However, during this COVID-19 COVID pandemic, we can see a surge in the number of gig workers where workers who have been laid off could quickly turn to the gig economy to tide them over the period of unemployment, providing them a door to generate income. As demand for services such as pee hailing increased dramatically, the gig workers, particularly the delivery riders, continue working despite the elevated hull risk. Those in this service are vulnerable in two ways. Firstly, they are exposed to the COVID-19 infection and secondly, exposed to the risk of work hazard such as accidents. The situation is much worse considering they do not have the same protection as full-time workers. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see only 12.3% of the 2.5 million self-employed individuals are covered for employment injury. There is a big coverage gap here where many self-employed individuals out there are not aware of basic protection that they need to have in the event of an adversity. Matching incentive and contribution grants were introduced during the pandemic to address the immediate protection gap faced by self-employed individuals. Despite promotional efforts and the sharing of glaring cases and the missed opportunities from being protected, the number still seems to be low. Some statistics as of August 2021 of the occurrence of incidents where 56 employment-related committing accidents had taken place and 597 happened during non-working hours shows that they are not covered. And this, pos this poses a question to us on their welfare. Do they have additional insurance in place to protect them in the event of incidents happen outside of work? For workplace-related accidents, 567 cases were reported to SOXO, of which 103 were non-employment non injury. In addressing social protection reforms, there are also legislative and behavioral challenges that need to be considered as well. These include the earnings of self-employed workers are more volatile compared to full-time employees which makes the calculation and collection of contributions more challenging. Secondly, the self-employed workers usually need to shoulder both the employer and employee share of contributions unless specific measures are in place to provide for an adjusted contribution rate, at least for some categories of the self-employed. Thirdly, self-employed workers are very diverse in terms of circumstances needs and contribu contributory capacities ranging from liberal professions and business owners to small-scale farmers or contributing family workers and more recently workers on digital platform. Last but not least, some features of social protection systems such as high level of fragmentation can make it more difficult for the self-employed to contribute or qualify for benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, in the nutshell, moving forward, SOXO is ramping up efforts to adapt legal frameworks to ensure coverage for workers in all forms of employment. These efforts include improving protection for informal workers through proposed amendments to the Legislative Act. Already in our pipeline is to extend employment protection for self-employed individuals under the Employment Insurance Act 2017. The EIS will provide a form of income replacement for the self-employed when the businesses is closed or loss of income has occurred. To ensure successful implementation of the legislative coverage on informal workers, a coherent control is required consisting of enforcement and compliance. The process calls for SOXO systematic setting and arrangement within the organization as well as external collaboration measures to consistently execute both measures.
For example, automatic enrollment along with renewal of licenses issued by other regulatory bodies in the country is an application of smart part enforcement to ensure informal workers are protected. Given the dynamic features of the self-employed, it is also important to align the services based on individual needs. It is clear that the self-employed varies in terms of volatile earnings, diverse needs, and contribution capacities. Therefore, it is crucial for SOXO to look into other strategic solution as one size fits all approach may be less relevant in addressing the digital platform economy target group. A solid combination frameworks and classification of workers may need to be established, which is dynamic and adaptable to future circumstances and their nature of work. Recognizing the form of employment in these new sectors would allow SOXO to explore job market trends and facilitate employment of job seekers in between formal and informal sector. In doing so, SOXO is building cooperation with key players and leading organizations in the self-employed sectors to facilitate social protection coverage for their members. The collaboration with key players such as Grab, MDEC and Happy Fresh is to make social contribution as part of the registration process of self-employed workers with these platforms. This requirement will safeguard the self-employed under a solid and comprehensive social security protection system for a minimal cost. Though, through systematic process and defined resources, SOXO will be able to channel more effective benefits, including reaching out the, to the self-employed for employment services assistance during any crisis. Let me conclude saying that the key to a strong social security is adaptation to the ever-changing world. If we are unable to adjust and transform today, our future generation may be excluded from the benefits that will set better well-being and high living standards. Learning from the pandemic, changing nature of work and new working norms that have emerged since, SOXO is ready to strengthen its social protection system in Malaysia. We cannot leave anyone unprotected as having protected and productive individuals supports the development of the country, sustainability and equitability. No one should be left behind, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. With that, thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy.